Welcome to the Published Plot. I'm Nate. I'm Jessica. And I'm Mike. And Nate, what are you wearing? We were talking about saints and holy people from Hawaii. And I thought of one of my personal patron saints, St. Thomas Magnum. All right. He's a fictional character. He didn't live a saintly life. And um, we were, were discussing... So all those prayers to St. Saint, to, to saint Magnum are, are no good? Well... I mean, there might be in the history of the church some other saint with that name. It seems like an old-timey mm. name, but... Yeah, it, I'm well, hoping that maybe they're getting diverted to Albertus Magnus. Huh? Huh? <laughs> well, God knows what to do with them. <laughs> no, but yes, no, um... The, the main issue is that Thomas Magnum is not an actual person. He's a character played by Thomas Selleck. Oh. And Thomas Selleck would be eligible for our book club because he's not a saint in that he's still alive. Okay. Mm-hmm. But we, <laughs> That's were, fair. We, we were going to discuss not the fun adventures on the, the big island and other of the major popular places it of would life. Be, it would be <laughs> super... I think they were mostly on Oahu. Around Honolulu. Listen, mm. I was like five when the show was on. That's All fair. I know That's is fair. he drove fast cars. Yeah. He wore, wore a Detroit Tigers cap and. Had an awesome mustache. Yes, he had an awesome mustache. He had a poor butler that had to deal with him. He was kept stealing stuff from his one friend. Think how great it would be <laughs> if we had a saint who drove somebody else's Ferrari. Listen, I live a simple life. I took a vow of poverty. I can't own a Ferrari. However, <laughs> if you want to loan me your 308, I will happily accept that as a favor. I, I and, feel like this is on the level of like the the Amish who can't drive the car, but they can own it and then hire a driver, which seems less simple than just driving yourself. <laughs> and, for, and, and and to that end, if you happen to have a Ferrari or I don't know a Lamborghini or a Maserati or any other fancy Maserati. car that you would that you would like to to have me drive, we will help. So you I don't have to worry about a on car. the road to sainthood. I just want to I just want to drive it. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I did hit, you know, a bump so hard it turned my car off on our road. So probably not good for you. Oh, no, 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 no. That was you. That wasn't me. I've, I've, never had that, I've never had that happen to me. But anyway, we should talk about the saints of yeah. Father Damien, uh, Marianne Cope, and Servant of God, Joseph Dunn. Now, hmm. these are amazing people, but they don't strictly fit into our series because they were all either European or American. In, in, in one case, both. So, lay it down in the background. What did these people go to Hawaii for? Uh, well, uh, Father Damien went to Hawaii because he super duper wanted to be a missionary. Mm -hmm. And so, he was studying to be a priest. They were going to send missionaries to Hawaii. Studying to be a priest in Belgium. Yes, he, is, he was from Belgium. And the pr priest who was going to go got too sick to travel. So, he said, I'll do it. So... He, he, he was allowed to go to Hawaii, got ordained in Honolulu, and then started working as a missionary. Now, if I remember, he was going to be assigned to a leper colony. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a place that had been established by the Hawaiian government, mm -hmm. where, you know, and you know, again, we're not defending the efficacy of leper colonies as a treatment, but this is where the Hawaiian government had decided to put all the lepers, and they were basically just left there to die. So he went there as an act of profound charity. Yes, mm. in fact, it was a, such a, considered a extreme act that his bishop wouldn't make anyone go, you know, under pain of obedience. He's yeah. like, I'm asking for volunteers. Legit volunteers. <laughs> and yeah. and we can rotate out who's there because the idea at the time was that the longer you stayed in contact with lepers, the more likely you would get it. Well, mm -hmm. th that is generally true yeah and then, and then while he was on one of his rotations the realization his first was rotation the realization <laughs> was made that no that actually doesn't the, the rotation idea doesn't actually necessarily work because it, it's not about the time you spend in contact but about the fact that you came into contact so well but you know so what was intended to be i think like a three-month rotation mm -hmm. turned out to be the rest of his life yeah. yes yes at, at a certain point they did allow for people who were on the colony as workers to leave. But there was a, a long length of time in which he had to be there, even though he wasn't a leper, um, because he was the only priest on the island for a long time. Mm -hmm. They had situations like a boat got near the island because it was an area where there was mountains between it and the rest of the yeah, island, a, so a, no a, one's going to wander into the leper colony. It's a colony. peninsula. 
as it, the boat got close, he would yell his confession, and the priest would absolve him, and luckily they well, spoke a language the Hawaiian people yeah, didn't. Yeah, they, both, they <laughs> both spoke French. As, as, as I understand it, the, 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 the boat was coming in under the normal auspices of bringing supplies and, and, and providing him with an opportunity to meet with a confessor, mm -hmm. and as the boat got close... They stopped, and the, the captain said, no, this is as we're not, we're not coming any closer. That's this, a is as, this is as close as we are allowed to go. And so Father Damien had to row out mm -hmm. a portion of the way to the boat, but couldn't get close to the boat because mm -hmm. for the same reason the boat couldn't get close to the island. Yeah. And, and, and he had to go and yeah holler it, as you said, in, in French. So that way it was still private, but... Now, the, the, the truly amazing thing about Father Damien is he wasn't just the priest to these people. No, he appeared to be pretty much everything. Mm -hmm. As the initial idea was, we'll make a colony for all the, these cases that are really bad leprosy. Because there were some people who were lepers that didn't get immediately sent there. Mm -hmm. But that was pretty much the extent of the planning. Yeah. So the, a bunch the, of people got dumped on this place. You're never going to see your friends, your family again. You have not enough supplies. It's an area where they couldn't really grow a lot of stuff. And it was, you know, lawless were, and horrible. They were, they were and, all and, but abandoned there. Yeah. yeah it's, it's another one of those situations where the government had this really great idea for how we're going to go and take care of this problem. And we're going to take care of everything. It's just going to every... We're gonna, they're going to be separate, but they're still going to be equal. They're going to have all the things they need, and everything's going to be yeah, fine. Because that and, idea has always worked out. And logistically, they didn't put in enough planning it, as to how to make that actually it, work. It seems like the only thing with which they adequately supplied this colony was alcohol. Yeah. Because there was a huge drinking problem. And so, as a shepherd of souls, Father Damien's biggest task was just getting these people to realize that you are still human beings. The world may have abandoned you, but God has not. You have dignity. You don't have to indulge your worst nature. Just because you have a disease, this horrible affliction, doesn't mean that your life is over. And little by little, through you know teaching and construction projects and encouraging sanitation, he restored these people's dignity. Yes. Yes. Early, earlier in his life, he quit school at about... 13 to work on the family farm and then his family later let him go to college to be for commerce now just to place it in context what year was he born uh he was born in 1840 so he quit school in 1853 mm -hmm. approximately yeah yes so when he wanted to become a priest that was an issue you've been mm -hmm. trained how to do you know commerce and farming and none of the things you need for priesting yeah. well, however he gets to the island and he needs help you know organizing farms well, it, well, <laughs> building <laughs> houses <laughs> Arranging roads. One is reminded of <laughs> Blessed Stanley Rother, who was not a very good student, but when he got down to Guatemala, his background as a farm boy worked like gangbusters. Mm -hmm. So, along with building all this infrastructure for them, caring for their spiritual needs, um, he was well known for caring for everyone's spiritual needs because this wasn't just a Catholic colony. Although the king of Hawaii often asked for religious orders for help because that's a good way to get help mm -hmm. it, it was for anyone they who come, has leprosy <laughs> they come cheap yeah so uh he was kind of uh revolutionary of his time mm -hmm. in that he 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 cared for the protestants the ones who followed their you know traditional religions mm -hmm. the catholics mm -hmm. he, he'd marry you know the catholics of the island even if they were at the point where they're pretty much on their deathbed just so you know they love each other i'm not gonna say no because you're gonna die in a month you can't get married mm -hmm. um which... an, an, an incredibly pastoral approach yes. well but <laughs> you think about it you, your parish priest even though he may not be exercising a lot of the authority he is the shepherd of the soul of everyone mm -hmm. who lives within his territorial boundaries. The Catholics, the non-Catholics, the vicious internet atheists, everybody who lives within his territory. Mm. Yeah. So part of what he did was he constantly asked for more help for the people of the mm -hmm. colony, whether it's you know material goods or other people to come help. He was like the persistent widow. Yes. He just kept asking and asking and asking until the easiest thing to do was just give him what he wanted. So one of the people who heard one of the various cries for help either... From him, or some say that you know the the king at the time was asking for help, mm -hmm. was uh, Sister Marianne Cope, who was born in Germany and came to America like as a baby. Mm -hmm. So for all her mm -hmm. life, 
She she considered herself probably pretty much American. But um, she could never be president. No. Well, she... she <laughs> Women she, didn't have the right to vote then anyway. She was born in 1838. There's many other reasons why she was never going to become president. <laughs> she was female. She was foreign. She was Catholic. <laughs> so... She, after she became a religious sister, started working in hospitals. She helped mm-hmm. find a couple of hospitals in New York. And then when she got the call that, you know, we need people in Hawaii, she's like, her and like six other sisters from her order are like, we're on it. <laughs> and this is the impressive thing. You know, the, the, the priests, they said one guy. Yeah. yeah. They said for help, the sisters bring an army. They bring six, six sisters, they're organized. <laughs> and Father Damien had done a lot. You know, he'd heroically spent himself. But... It was St. Marianne who really got things organized on Molokai. Yes, and she didn't even start there because there was a um, centralized place where they kind of dealt with all the lepers. Mm -hmm. And she worked at that hospital, and then she helped work at another hospital. And then she founded a home for essentially like the children, especially girls because they were nuns, of the people who got sent to Molokai because then they're essentially orphans now. If they don't have leprosy, they're not getting sent there. Mm -hmm. So she did all that in a... Eventually, she also ended up working on the leper colony. She showed up in 1888. Mm-hmm. So just before uh, Father Damien died. Yep. Because yes, he passed, he away, passed in 90, away in 1989. Yes. So uh, she she was asked to essentially do what she did on the main islands mm-hmm. there. So instead of it being the orphans of it, the women and the children who were on their own because their family didn't have leprosy and they were on their own there versus, you know, the other mm-hmm. way around. Mm-hmm. So she started that. Uh, she got to go and meet Father Damien because it's a very small area. Everyone knew each other. <laughs> now, by this time, Father Damien, for his many efforts, had in fact contrasted leprosy mm-hmm. and he was in the course of dying. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, so he, he found it one evening, as I understand this story, he, he had been... Uh, I think it was washing. It was it was something involving water, and the water was scalding him, but he did not feel any pain, mm. which is a that's a bad sign. Lepro- leprosy tends to attack the uh, the nerve endings and things. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. at the point at which he realized that he should th- this should hurt this a should lot hurt. more than it <laughs> does. I'm, I'm burning myself and I don't feel it. Oh crumbs! Yes, <laughs> exactly. Yes, she also ended up meeting. Um, Joseph Dutton around the same time because he had arrived at the island in 1886. He was an American. He had fought in the Civil War and unlike earlier ones we've done, Mm -hmm. he was a Union guy. Like (laughs) finally, (laughs) like afterwards, like the president, whenever their boat went past Hawaii, they they did like a essentially honoring him as a vet who did great things. Nice. (laughs) Uh, He he had been raised mostly Baptist growing up. he had been married. There was issues. She committed adultery. Yikes. He became an alcoholic. It completely dissolved. And then eventually he went in... Um, that seems like that seems like grounds for a decree of nullity. Yeah. Eventually he went and, you know, found like a, a, a monastery or retreat type place. Spent mm-hmm. some time there. Got mm-hmm. some inner peace from all of his things. Ended up converting. Hey. And heard about the lepers and showed up and said, basically, I'm here for... Whatever you need, I'm staying. <laughs> well, well, it is unfortunate that so many people have to find the church by by re- by reaching what is essentially a, a rock bottom in their lives. Church is always there for it them. It is very comforting to see all those people who were at a point where the only thing that they needed was comfort, and the church was the thing that brought it to them. So why why the the religious sisters made the house for women and, mm-hmm. and girls? He ended up getting tasked with the job of making an equivalent home for men. And religious orders were also asked to help, but he ended up being the person who was like the head and the founder of it. Yeah. And both him and um, Sister Marianne. Mother Marianne. Yes, Mother Marianne did not die of leprosy. I know. It's they super both impressive. died of old age. <laughs> and she was really old. She didn't die until what? 1918. So she died at the age of 80. 80. And he died at 87. Still on Hawaii, but not necessarily at the colony. Well, you know, yeah. not necessarily not necessarily that useful anymore. Yes, the, yes, the colony. You know, essentially, they stopped putting people on the colony, and because they realized, oh, just sending people into exile is not really the most humane solution. Well, that and oh wait, this is just this is a disease that works like all these other diseases do. So there's actually a way for us to fight this. 
Yes, yes. Uh, technically, leprosy is still around. Yep. It's just called... Hansen's disease. Hansen's disease. And I believe it's bacterial, and so therefore it can be fixed with antibiotics. Also, <laughs> note, when you're reading the Bible and it's talking about leprosy... It's not, not the same leprosy. Not the same leprosy. <laughs> like, you know, you know when uh, Moses' hand turned white, and then Naaman the leper... <laughs> again, not the same leprosy. Yes, because... In almost every single case, if you get this type of leprosy and you don't get medical treatment, it doesn't just disappear. Mm -hmm. Now, I mean, for for Moses, you know, that's, that could be a miracle level yeah. one, but yeah. still. Yeah. Well, and, you know, Naaman went to the prophet Elisha and he told him to wash and he was cured and it's a miraculous thing and the Lord himself references it. But in the when you, when you read about leprosy in the Bible, they're talking about a range of skin conditions, not necessarily Hansen's disease. Yes. 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 Many people have studied things. Disclaimer. It could be every, anything from, like, eczema to... Mm -hmm. <laughs> but anyway, so, although none of them were actually, you know, Pacific Islander, they all spent a good part of their life on the Pacific Islands. Well, and the great thing about... <laughs> Largely Molokai. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's, where the, that's where the lepers were. But the great thing is Father Damien was buried in Hawaii. Now, as normal in the course of a cause for canonization, his body was exhumed. And I, I forget if it was at the request of his family or the religious order, his body was transported back to Belgium. Yes, I think but, it was the order. But. I think it was the order. But then, at the request of the people of Hawaii, his heart went back to Molokai. Yes, yes. And um, he is, you can see a statue of him in the nation's capital, mm -hmm. along with in Hawaii's capital, mm -hmm. because every state gets to have two statues. And this is the person who was chosen by the state of Hawaii to represent them in the statuary gallery. Yes. Nice. Despite mm -hmm. what some Congress people say. Mm. Yes. He's also, as you could expect, a patron of people who suffer from leprosy. Hawaii, Molokai, nope. the Diocese of Honolulu. Hey. And, yep. Yes. And uh, St. Marianne is patron of lepers, outcast, Hawaii, and also those with HIV or AIDS. Because it's a similar the way people were treated as outcasts. So. Yep, yep. I mean, they, they actually had AIDS colonies in Cuba. They just rounded them all up and put them in colonies. Mm -hmm. Terrible. And as a servant of God, we don't know what his patronage is going to be, but I'm going to go I'm, with lepers in and Hawaii. Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take a wild guess. Lepers and Hawaii. Maybe no, something no. about reform alcoholics if he beats the other one. If, he, be, if he gets there before Matt Talbot, sure. <laughs> Hey, again, we, we have multiple <laughs> patron saints of brewers, so we can have multiple patron saints. Th these aren't exclusive. <laughs> so, the church is universal, which means there are saints everywhere, and it means sometimes people are called to go very far away from where they're from and to dedicate their whole lives to people that they'd never met before. Three great examples of people who following our Lord Jesus Christ, gave their entire lives for people on the other side of the world. Yes. Saints Father Damien, Marianne Cope, and Servant of God Joseph Dutton, pray, pray for, for us. us. Comment below with your favorite thing about Magnum P.I. Mm -hmm. Was it the short shorts? It was the 80s. Or, you know, maybe memories you have of Hawaii. Hey! <laughs> Never been, but I hope to go one day. That'd be nice. Mm. So, subscribe to our channel. Ring the church bell to be notified when the next plot is uploaded. Give this episode a like if you hate leprosy. And until next time, remember to live your faith. Love your faith. Share, Share that, that love. love.